We're back, and we're here with Laurel K. Hamilton, whose latest Anita Blake novel, Dance Macabre, is in stores now. Welcome back to Fast Forward. Thanks for having me. It's been a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. There have been a few Mary Gentry novels. There have been a few Anita Blake novels. Mm -hmm. And now we have Dance Macabre, which is interesting in that I don't think there's anything procedural that you'd normally expect in an in Anita Blake uh, book in this book. There is no crime in this book. It's the first book that has no crime. Um, this is the mystery here is, is Anita pregnant? <gasps> and if she is pregnant, which of the six men she's sleeping with is the father? That is the mystery for this A one. A question for our times and one I'm sure <laughs> yes. that bears heavily on her mind. And it's not like that's the only thing she's got to worry about in this book. There are other things going on. Yes. Uh, we have the largest gathering of master vampires in uh, the history of the United States, all coming to St. Louis. And when you get that many sharks in one place at one time, no matter how good the intentions, bad things happen. And they're all coming together as much as anything else because of Jean-Claude's Ma Petite. And what's happening true. to her? Jean-Claude has gone up in power level to be a, uh, his own bloodline. He's the first American vampire to gain that much power. And a lot of his power does come from the fact that Anita is his human servant, and she's a necromancer uh, with powers almost, almost not seen in the memory of any vampire. Some of them are a few thousand years old. And as a matter of fact, in, in, the, in the novel previous to this, uh, we had evidence of that when she had difficulty focusing her powers and almost woke up the entire, an entire city of the dead. We have gone from the beginning of the series where raising one, one corpse was, was effort to the potential hinting that she could raise an entire cemetery and not break a sweat. She is reaching frightening levels of power and the vampires are wanting to see how powerful is she? How powerful is Jean-Claude? Can he control her? And it's not just the masters who are interested in her, but let's talk a little bit about some of the things that, are, that, that have contributed to this, in this exponential growth in power. Uh, Anita is actually a part of two uh, triumvirates. Yes. Pa th pairings of three. The first, of course, is Jean-Claude and Richard and Anita. Mm -hmm. uh, an interesting dynamic always. As always. Uh, and that one is the one that is, is, is to a great extent much of the focus of this book because of the effect it's having on really all three of them. Yes, all power comes with a price. And uh, Jean-Claude is descended from Belle Moore's line, Beautiful Death. And her line very much so is a two-edged blade. You never get anything from their line of power where you don't lose something. Um, it is a line that is for love, lust, uh, emotional issues, and those are always complex. And one of the primary tools used in Bell's line and used by Anita, or, or that Anita carries with her, is Audur. Am I pronouncing it correctly? I pronounce it the uh, Audur, Audur, but um, my French, I've been told by people who speak French, is pretty poorly pronounced. I do my best. <laughs> Um, yes, the odeur is if passion could be something that you need to eat like food. Is if you, and if you do not have enough odeur, which is passion, sex, literally you can die from lack of love. So literally it's another, it's another kind of sustenance mm -hmm. that is also magnifying her natural abilities, her, her latent, her potential abilities, and those of the people most closely tied to her. Yes, very much so. Um, Master vampires that are very powerful gain a secondary feeding. That is what the adore is. It's meant that if you were going on a long trip, that you could feed off the lust without leaving evidence behind that you were a vampire. Anita being human, she's already eating food. She's already. But now if she does not feed the adore, the people connected with her, uh, Nathaniel, who is her animal to call, and Damien, who is her vampire servant, which has never before happened, um, they can literally die because it is her power that makes Damien's heart beat, makes him wake at night. If she does not feed enough, then literally one night he may go to sleep uh, and never wake again. So 
besides being a burden, because it can be terribly inconvenient <laughs> to living a normal life. Yes, you sit there and go, oh, I, I have a lunch meeting, and you don't mean you're going to get food. <laughs> yes. And, and in addition, you have this terrible responsibility, because Anita, in, in the course of the, is it 14 novels? This is the 14th book, 14 yes. novels has accumulated quite a, and I don't know other, any other way to put this, but quite a family. Yes. People that she loves and who depend on her, yes. I mean, vampires, weirs. Uh, there are still some of her old human friends that she still has contact with. Uh, it's, it's this huge, it, it's getting very crowded, actually. It is getting very crowded. Um, and some people say, well, you know, it's time to, like, kill off some characters. And I say, that's like saying you have too many friends, and you go to your friends and go, I'm sorry, Stan, you gotta go. They're, they're, it's just too crowded, I can't deal with you all. Uh, but yes, it, it is beginning to be where then uh, the larger cast is getting interesting enough and alive enough that they're taking more and more on screen time. That's a wonderful thing, that your secondary characters are coming alive, but it does mean that the books are, the books are very busy. Well, let's talk about how that affects the author in terms of the next book, because all readers are greedy and are waiting for the next book. Uh, how do you deal with that? How do you deal with characters that are alive to you and real to you and that clamor to move forward in their lives through you mm -hmm. and still tell the stories and maintain the focus that you want to maintain? Well, it's difficult. Um, book 14, you have two readers this late in the series two readers that you think of when you're writing. You have one series of readers that have been with you from the beginning, and then you have others that you have to assume have never picked up your book. So you have to give enough information and enough on-screen time for the new readers to know what's going on, but not so much so that the old readers are going, we, we know this already, move it along. Um, as a writer, it makes it both very difficult and very easy to have this many characters that are this alive. It's hard because there's this many characters. And you want to do the best job you can because all of them only live through my words on paper. And if I don't do a good job, then that's the best they get. Um, it's easy, on the other hand, because at, the characters are more alive. They write quicker. Their dialogue, their personalities, everything comes much smoother. Um, even the newer uh, characters that just introduced in the last couple of books, some of them have come on very, very strongly. Um, People have asked if I uh, would do uh, hive them off into their own series or books. Um, I no, they're they're here. This is this is their world. And, and, and the way you structured the community uh, that they are a part of, it would be extremely difficult without some kind of a cataclysmic event that would cast them away. Yes. Into an isolated area, for that to occur without you doing some serious damage to some of the participating individuals. Yes, uh, and I don't, I'm not a big fan of cataclysmic things in a series. Anita's life is, is dramatic enough, you know, she doesn't need anything too cataclysmic. Um, but yes, we are getting to the point where I think we need more girls in the book. Some of the men need to date other people. Anita can't date everybody. Um, we, I don't know, she's doing a marvelous job. <laughs> um, you can date up to a certain point, but I don't see how one person can meet this many emotional needs. It isn't the physical needs. Physical needs, if everybody's game, you can, you can handle that. But emotional needs in a relationship, that's harder. And, and she does take that very seriously. I, I, yes, she it's does. A, it's a continuing theme through the, through the novels is she takes her responsibilities very seriously. Yes. And for someone who lost a large, a, a significant portion of her family early in her life. She takes her new family very seriously. She's very protective. It, it's yes. when she's at her most powerful. Yes, uh, Anita. If Anita feels loyal and feels uh, feels like she she, it's not love that motivates her at first with a lot of people in her life. It is loyalty. Usually, loyalty and friendship come before love for her. But once she's given her loyalty, it is unswerving. It never, it never goes away. And she, and once you become part of her family, part of the people she protects, that never goes away. And she'll move in heaven and earth to keep you safe. Well, I, I want to go into another area. This is a, 
a significantly sized book. This is this this is like trilogy fantasy sized <laughs> in terms of the number of pages. Yes, it is. And it's part of an extremely productive period for you as a writer. Can we talk about that a little bit? What's been going on? Um, I will have four new books out this year, and um, one is a short story collection, uh, Strange Candy, that will be out in October. So these are all previously published or unpublished stories. I just did introductions to mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. But uh, four months ago, Micah came out, which right. was the 13th in, in the Anita series. Now we have Dance Macabre. And then in December, we will have Mistral's Kiss, which is the fifth Mary Gentry book. And all of these have been written in the same 12-month period. That's, it sounds exhausting, but was it, it? It is exhausting, but I'd been trying to take a vacation. Everyone told me, oh, you're so stressed, you should take time off. I kept trying, and it was driving me crazy. My husband, who is a very wise man, um, said, you know, stop listening to everybody else. What do you want to do with your free time? And I said, I want to write another book. He says, well, then try that, and if it drives you crazy, stop. And if it doesn't, well, that's how Micah got written. Micah got written in my spare time, and it it wrote faster than any book I've ever done, and it also was the first to sweep number one across the lists. And so I felt better. For me, it was like, a, that was the vacation, to be able to write a book in such a short period of time, because Micah was, was the shortest book I'd ever written. It, that was a vacation for me. And that made me go back to Dance Macabre. I was refreshed and renewed, and it wrote even faster after that. Well, I remember when we were talking before, excuse me. <coughs> I remember when we were talking before, at the first time we met, Mary Jet Weaver was out, and you said you had gone to that storyline to take a break from Anita. Yes. Um, I'd written five Anita Blake novels in a row, and I started mm -hmm. having Anita Blake, I, I had Anita anxiety dreams. Her job, not mine. And I thought, oh, we've got to have a break. So Mary was created so that I could write an Anita book and then a Mary book and get a break in between. Um, and that has, that has worked, but the books have begun to, um, to cross each other. I am writing one, editing a different one. This is the first time I've gotten to tour for, for a series when I'm actually writing the next book in the same series and not a different series, which is actually kind of nice. Now, do you, do you try to go back and forth? Does this keep the battery charged, taking a look at these two different ladies and their adventures? Yeah, it does. It's, it's a different perspective. And that is what I wanted when, when I created Mary. I wanted a different world to play in, different people to play in uh, and play with. Uh, but Anita, Anita really hits more of my issues closer to home issues kind of thing mm -hmm. than Mary does because Mary is a very different voice and further away from my own natural voice. So uh, it's, I go away from one book, I come and I go, well, how's everybody been? It's like old home week. That brings up a question. Some authors, I'm thinking of uh, Robert Jordan, uh, J.K. Rowling, say they know what the end is in a storyline of the characters that they've created and that we've been following for a number of years. Mm -hmm. How much do you know and how much is each, the writing each book a discovery of what's going to happen next for your principal characters? For me, each book gives me other plots. The character development takes me in different directions. For Mary, I know the actual end end, but I don't know how we're going to get there. Mm -hmm. uh, but for Anita, Anita's like, a mystery series. It, it, each book is as self-contained as possible, and each book will will uh, send me off in different directions. I am following a plot right now. Dance Macabre um, is the f is the second of uh, from Incubus Dreams to Dance Macabre, and there will be one more book. I tried to put all this one plot in one book, and when I realized how much plot I had, I've been overly optimistic. I decided to, to, to take a deep breath, tone it down, and pick the different elements. So um, for me, every book breeds more books. And every new characters will take me off in different directions that I never foresaw going. One of the things that is often discussed about the 14 uh, Anita Blake novels is that with Narcissus and Chains, 
there was the beginning of a shift in focus in terms of Anita, where some of the earlier books were, how can somebody who hunts vampires be called cut and dried as a procedural? But there seemed to be, she seemed to have a different sense of self mm -hmm. and a different sense of the world than she did in the last few books. And there was some outcry at that time mm -hmm. about the change. Uh, we, are, we, we kind of expect to have this, you know, we love a treat, we expect to have the same treat, perhaps a little fresher, perhaps with a little more frosting each time. Has that settled down? Have people, have people become accustomed and found something to like in the direction that Anita is going now? Well, each book sells uh, better than the last, so the audience is widening. So everybody, some of it's calmed down. Some people are never going to be happy unless things go exactly the way they want. Um, one of the reasons the series changed was because early in the series, and I was younger, it seemed like a wonderful idea to do violent crimes on paper. And as I got older, I wanted to do something a little more life-affirming mm -hmm. than violent cases. And so the relationships began to interest me more than the, the straight crime. That is a writer. Is it? I think was just a change and nothing's more life affirming than trying to figure out who you love and how to love them. Which is, which is an incredibly large part of this novel. Yes, it is. Um, because really everybody wants somebody to look them in the eye and truly see who they are. Truly see them for who they are and love them. The whole package, warts and all. That, that is a continuing search in every person that you meet. And Anita is no different. And the people around her are no different. Everyone wants to find someone who accepts them. So with Das Macabre, we have reached a, a pause point for Anita. I can say this without spoiling it for anyone, that she has, she has a, she comes to a resolution in terms of a sense of self and what, she, what is important to her. Mm -hmm. But we now have two other things to look forward to this year from you. We have a collection of short stories in October. Mm -hmm. And we have a new Mary Gentry adventure to read in December. Mm -hmm. What a wonderful Christmas present. Oh, well, thank you. Merry Christmas. And we are out of time. Oh. Laurel, thank you so much for coming by. It's always a delight. Congratulations on the continuing success of your series. Oh, well, thank you. And thanks for having me here. It's always a pleasure. Thank you again. You're welcome. Well, that's it for this edition of Fast Forward. We hope you found something of interest, and we hope you'll come see us again. Until then, this is Tom Schott saying, take care. <laughs>